what a year it's been. I was just looking yeah. back the other day at what we were doing this day a year ago, and it was walking into houses like yours, just introducing ourselves and That's right. yeah. uh, doing it a million times a week. And you know, we're so much further down the road now, just because there's been such great community support and the the natural ethos of Duluth being appreciative of the arts is yeah. is the bedrock. That's the foundation that that we are able to live and grow from. So. You know, we didn't create that. It was here long before us and, and done by others. And, and a, you know, a deep, felt, heartfelt thank you to everybody for keeping Duluth artistic yep. and, and keeping it creative. And, and hopefully that just, that grows more in the future. Story Road is going to be quite an adventure this year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new seminars and things happening. So yeah, just go to catalystcontent.org and, um, and uh, register yourself and join in the so basically that registration process signs you up for the education stuff, but also it's the track to submit your work. Yeah, right. you, all your work, uh, you get to pick two pieces of work that you want to submit to the festival for free. You get to go to all the seminars for free. You get to watch all the stuff we produce online for free. You get a free ticket to the festival. You, it's just the whole, the whole, the whole thing. Nice. We're trying to make it easy for everybody so that they just sign up at the beginning of the year and they don't worry about it. That's great. For the rest of the year. Yep, we signed up. We're very yeah. excited yeah. for it. Yeah. Exciting. It's going to be yeah. a, a hell of a ride. Oh, and yeah. So it's the last week of September, right? The actual festival. The actual festival is uh, yeah, September 30th through October 4th this year. That's nice. awesome. Yep. Nice. This interview was recorded before COVID. For up-to-date info on Catalyst Content Festival and Story Road Institute, go to their website, catalystcontent.org. The submission due date for Catalyst and Story Road 2020 is now July 3rd, 2020. All right, great. So, who um, are we looking at? What are we talking to? What do we do? So that's the main camera there. Okay. And then when we're when I'm talking, am I looking at you guys, or do you want me? We're just having a conversation. So, just, so the cameras aren't even there. They're there only, only for the intro. If you're talking to the audience, if you ever have something you want. Look to... at the main. Yeah. Got it. I'm there. Good. Okay. Okay. All great. right. All right. Hello, everybody. This is the Creativity Show. I'm your co-host Bodie Werner. And I'm Claire Cooley. And today we're here with Philip Gilpin Jr., Executive Director of Catalyst. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for the invite. This is yeah. fun. We're so uh, grateful that you're here yeah. and excited to share your wonderful opportunities you're bringing to Duluth through Catalyst. But I'm going to start with asking the questions I ask everyone. Okay. Number one is, what is creativity? I have a very simple answer for that, and I think that creativity is our natural default emotional and conscious state. I think that we go to bed, our minds want to be creative, we wake up in the morning, our minds want to be creative. Uh, I think we spend most of our time figuring out how to get through the day not being creative. Um, I think people s tend to think of creativity as something that's a, a talent or an extra or something that is you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not necessary for extraneous. every day. It's extraneous. Thank right. you. That's a, that's a great word for it. If only I was creative enough to have come up with that. Um, I take the other approach, which is I think it's what we are, and I think it how we use it or don't use it or how we put it out there or how we shield it or don't shield it is very much the way that uh, we define uh, kind of how, our, how people see us. Nice, nice. So what hinders creativity? Just all of the conditioning that you have from a young age to learn about how you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to do, what the rules are, how things are supposed to work. Uh, all these things that somehow are bestowed upon a four, five, six, seven year old that have had no chance to go out into the world yet and make their own decisions yet on what creativity should or shouldn't be. Uh, you know, it's very, it's very common that most educational systems, especially in the Western world, will focus more and more on, on less creativity as you go further on. You know, when you start in preschool, it's sit down, paint, use the blocks, play with colors. By the time you get to senior year of high school, art class is an elective that only 10 people take to fill in a credit. Um, it's not something that's sustained through. So I think the greatest hindrance is it's just we use our daily social skills to try to, you know, get through life. And unfortunately, one of the things that we learn is don't express your creativity. Or if you do, 
you have to be famous for it, or right. you have to do it in this way by going to this audition or writing this type of play, or go to this theater, or so creativity can be sometimes be very pigeonholed and steered in one direction or another, as opposed to just, mm -hmm. and that just compares to you know there are a lot of a lot of cultures that are the exact opposite. Uh, they tend not to be mostly Western nations, although that's naturally like places like Berlin and others are very creative. Um, but for the most part, it's a, it's a economic and political system that, that hinders it. Well, I I'm, uh, totally agree, and the most popular TED Talk is Sir Ken Robbins, Ken Robbins yeah. on how school kills creativity. Oh, yeah. And being that it's where every innovation, everything that has improved uh, human life from planting, you know, instead of wandering and hunting and gathering, everything that improves our situation here on the planet came from creativity. So, and it, it continues to. Yes, I mean, the, exactly. Every day of a, you know, of a scientific advancement or discovery or an artistic achievement, and, and it's interesting because there's this weird dichotomy at play where you have, for the most part, a society that's doing what we just talked about and trying to put up barriers and keep things in a box, but yet it celebrates and it elevates its famous and rich and lucky people are the ones who broke out of that box. Your, your mm -hmm. Elon Musk who gets to go work and play with rockets all day, or mm -hmm. your Reese Witherspoon who gets to be an actress all day. Or So there's this weird notion that <clears throat> Creativity is supposed to be repressed, and then only the few rich, successful people are the ones that are allowed to. Mm. And, and when you, you know, talk with, when I've talked with people who are in the finance world and the business world who have been there for 10, 15, 20, sometimes 30 years, you ask them what what they want to do now that they have all this money and time, and I'd say 90% of the time the answer is something creative. I want to now go open up my art studio. I want to now go you know, scuba dive or That's learn right. how to learn how to, you know, uh, make make movies or That's right. so yeah, I, I've never understood why it always has to be something that's shut off and then only turned back on for an elite few. It's uh, what I like to call, you know, fear. <laughs> oh, it's definitely fear. <laughs> well, absolutely. I mean, you know, a personal story to that is the way that, you know, I grew up in a in a New England town where Going out to Hollywood, it was like the big crazy thing you people do after college if you're on the creative side of the world. Um, you either go to graduate school or you go get a degree or you go be an artist, mm -hmm. right? How, how many times have we heard that? Oh, they've gone to be an artist. And that mm -hmm. could mean moving to San Francisco or going to Portland or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Usually derisive. Uh, usually, yeah, usually there's a hint of like, oh, yeah, they're going to be an artist, you know? Um, and I think that's starting to change now in the in the in the digital video video age a little bit. Um, I love the topic and the point that Elon Musk keeps making over and over again in a lot of his conversations, where he talks about menial day jobs are going to be phased out yeah. thanks to advances in technology, and art really is the future. If you want to know what you should be putting your kids in school for right now, that the degree that they should be learning, it is art based. Right. Because once we have figured out the technology and we have the capability to make as many things in our lives mundane and routine as possible, we're going to want to go spend our time as artists. Doing more fulfilling. Yeah. Doing what we alone can do. If it's our artistic expression, no one else can contribute that to the world but us. But us. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think it's my mission is to show the necessity of art. Art, you know, is the best hope humanity has. The, the cultural uplifting and the combining of energies for problem solving and all of it. So once I was drawing on the coast in Big Sur and I was there for hours and hours and car after car would stop and they'd be car sick, grumpy, the kids would be fighting and they'd get out of the car and they'd walk over to this magnificent view and they'd take a few breaths and they'd chill out, feel better. And I went, that's my job, is to bring that calm that nature gives everyone into everyday life. Yeah. And um, that's a necessity, that's not a luxury. 
chaos. Right. right. Well, and, and the fear of chaos, I think, is what keeps people away from being creative. And yes. The fear of failure, the fear of being perceived as being wrong, or the fear of upsetting the current social dynamic that they have in their world. You know, the person, right. how many people are out there who are artists by night, but none of their friends or family know about it because they're afraid that the painting they made might be too risque or the, mm -hmm. the poem they wrote might be seen as, you know, too mm -hmm. salacious or mm -hmm. it just doesn't, I find the majority of the stories that we see submitted to Catalyst these days have to do with one of two themes. It's either economic inequality uh, and these, are, these aren't just documentaries, these are scripted series, these are fictional pieces, right. but there's, they seem to have a wide um, variety of ways of telling the same story, which is there's some type of fundamental economic inequality, or the other big thing is a repressive artist trying to come of age or get out of their mm -hmm. existing narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and you see, that, you see that in politics today. I mean, politics today is very much just a story, an, the art of storytelling has become politics today. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, I think as we go forward, you're going to see, my prediction would, for the next 10 years is you're going to see the younger generations have more freedom of expression in a way that harkens back to what I heard. Ooh, there's somebody Sorry. at the front door. Well, Excuse. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me just unplug. Is it Santa? Yeah, I hope so. That might be the easiest way to get that not to happen again. <laughs> Do you need to get the door? I think it's no, the, probably the mail. The mail. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> they didn't ring the doorbell. This gives me a moment to, to double check, because I have to be the camera in, too. Right. Will you count to count up? One, um, two, three, four, five. And Philip, test please. one, two, three. It's all good. I like working. to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Sorry always fun. To, always fun to do the half the halftime joke. Be like, oh my god, it's not working. You have to <laughs> do it all over again. Yes. I know. I've, yeah. Uh, I've <coughs> okay. Lived well, through let's, that before. Yes. All right. Let's Speaking see. of creativity and things unexpected out of the box, mm -hmm. I hope you don't edit that out. Yes. <laughs> right. Exactly. We like to keep it raw. Yeah. 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 Well, that's um, yeah. That's very. It, insightful and um, my last question yeah. that I ask everyone is what enhances creativity? First word that just popped into my head is freedom. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think when people have the freedom of they're free from fear or reprisal people are more willing to go and express themselves and the way that I know we see that in our world is how much all the creators loved coming to Duluth because they were free from their normal everyday life for a couple of days. They weren't in LA or New York, they weren't in Chicago, wherever they come from, and they have that work big city mentality. You know, how many times did we hear the comment, oh, it's just so nice here. Yeah. It's so relaxing here. It's right. so, and I, I think it's that feeling of that people, why people want to go on vacation. It's mm -hmm. that initial moment when you step on the beach or you, you know, you get on the plane or, mm -hmm. and I think that is what enhances it is we keep having to remind ourselves that it, that it's in there. And when you get those little moments and it can be, it can be really small things. It can be, and this is going to sound really weird, but like one of my favorite things to do at the end of the day is when you come home and you, you take your shoes and your socks off and your feet just breathe a little bit mm -hmm. and it just kind of centers you or, mm -hmm. That, that moment when you put your pajamas on and you put your hoodie on and you know yeah. and you, you grab the chocolate bar. <laughs> you're, finally free you're free for relax. those few minutes. And, That's nice. And I think a lot of times we still always, we have this countdown clock in our head constantly, which is, okay, I'm free in this moment right now, but we know the moment when we're not gonna be free anymore. It's when the alarm goes off tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. or it's when I have to go into that next meeting or when it's... Mm -hmm. And so when I say freedom, I don't necessarily just mean taking a vacation. I mean, when was the last time in your life you, were, you felt free to the, express yourself and artistically to, to the point that you didn't have the countdown clock ticking? As to, you know, like it's the weekend syndrome. 
get off mm-hmm. at five eight, five o'clock on Friday. Mm-hmm. I have until eight a.m. on Monday. Right. And you're and you're gonna you're gonna fit it all in mm-hmm. there. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's freedom. I think that's that's beautiful. So Absolutely. the question, my last question, then I'm going to turn it to you, is what is your dream? To try to free as many artists as they can from having to not be artists in their daily lives. Um, that's the reason that the organization was started. Even though I didn't start it, it's why I, t- I really fell in love with its mission and took it over. It's why I left my corporate job from the big studio back in 2008, because they, at some level, were not focused on how to support and advance artists as, good as, as much as they could. Mm-hmm. Part, of, part of what my job there was was to find ways to you know, protect the studio's interests as opposed to protecting the artist's interests. Um, it's, it, it's, great, it's great that the studios exist. They pay the artists to do the work but it's just not something that I could have lived doing in the cubicle for the next 20 years. Um, So I think that really is the goal is whether it's through the festival, whether it's through some of the educational courses, whether it's just making introductions between a creator and uh, a producer or a writer that they end up collaborating with. Mm -hmm. Um, how How many connection points can we make that allow more and more people to be their artistic selves as often mm-hmm. as possible, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's it's that Jeff Bezos question. If I had his money, you know, there people would be given a hundred thousand dollars when they when they enter the Duluth area and say, here you go, you've got a year to go be an artist. But I don't have one hundred sixty billion dollars. Hey, well, <laughs> we, we want you to. We well, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I think um, I just want to make a comment about. Um, all that you're saying and scientifically proven uh, any emotion expressed stimulates our immune system mm. so what is the respectful way to express any and every emotion art mm. nobody gets hurt so it's healing mm-hmm. we can enhance our lives my home is full of my artistic creations from furniture to and the environment I created for my son to teach himself then learn through watching other people make movies. He Mm -hmm. just like, I want to be a movie maker. He didn't like, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't afford as a fine artist to send him to the the big, you know, expensive schools. So he just learned it by doing it. And I knew a few people that knew how to do things and he uh, got, uh, you know, mentors. But um, art heals us, Mm -hmm. it enhances our lives and it's, the creative collaborations are how we're going to solve the issues on this planet. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, so Absolutely. I'm all about it. I call myself a born again artist because it saved my life through really tough times, and um, and I I call the creativity retreats I do kindergarten for all ages. Yes. So I believe in it, and um, and I want to share it with everybody. So yeah. that's why the creativity show. Exactly. So. You ask some of the... Yes. So for me, Catalyst was this really fun five days of, of events, partying, going and watching TV shows and documentaries that I could see nowhere else in the mm-hmm. world, and bonding with and hanging out with some of my favorite TV show writers and directors just on like a human level. Mm. And, you know, there's this magical story of meeting this amazing writer in a carriage ride at Glen <laughs> sounds about right. Yep. You know, it's just like totally fairy tale, and we just hit it off having this conversation, and then you learn later, days later, that they write like one of your favorite shows yeah. on planet Earth. And so that's what Catalyst was to me. Yeah. It was totally inspiring, and these connections Good. that I made really pushed me to make more of my creativity. So my question is, what is Catalyst to you? It is a really interesting mashup of the two things I was talking about earlier. It is 100% my daily life. Um, the, The last seven years, I personally have probably averaged about, I'd say between 90 and 100 hours a week on it. Uh, it's the reason that I didn't get married. It's the reason I don't have kids. It's I, I really focused in on on doing this 
for, so while it is my daily life, um, it's also my way of being creative. And it's, it's my art. It's my thing that I hope will, you know, live on well past after the time I'm involved with it. And, and it's being, it's built that way. It's built to be something that isn't based off of one person because yeah. that's not fair. That's not right. Um, that's, that's not the way things grow. So it's my, you know, I can't draw. I shouldn't say that. Everybody can draw. My, my version, my stick figures aren't exactly in high demand, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, so my, my art, if you will, is being able to create this new, this new thing. And, and I think the thing that I don't get to talk about enough, so I appreciate you asking the question, is just how new and unique and different what, what this organization is creating is. And I don't just mean I'm creating it, I mean all of us. You know our team, there's been dozens of local people, there are hundreds of people around the world that have been involved for 15 years putting this together. And the thing that is new about it is there isn't a really good pathway for people to express themselves in the episodic creative realm in the similar way that there is for film. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously Sundance broke the mold on that and you've got Tribeca and you've got Duluth Superior and you've got uh, festivals big and small and orga educational organizations like Film North and others that do film. But when you get into the episodic realm, the economics of episodics have always been so expensive that, you know, remember TV's only been around since what, early the 40s, 30s? Mm -hmm. Really when people started experimenting with it and, and broadcast has only been around for one or two generations. So the notion of people actually starting to make their own episodic content independently is really a very new thing, just right. like social media. You know, I was having that conversation with somebody yesterday that we forget that social media is only like 10 years old. It's yeah. a brand new toy in humanity yeah. that we're still just getting used to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are already getting tired of it. You know, a lot yeah. of us are starting to use it less. Uh, I definitely have co more conversations with people who tell me they're using social media less than people who are telling me they're using it more. Right. So. To me, this is, to get back to your question, to me, this is the way that hopefully um, my appreciation for artists can, can do some good and, and hopefully live on through these, through these connections and stories. Yeah. You know, I, 10 years down the road, it'd be fascinating to make some type of a family tree or something of all the random connections and things that came about because of yeah, people beautiful. who met each other through Catalyst. I can, I can see it as a piece of art. Yeah, it would be, <laughs> it would be amazing. I can yeah, see that. Yeah. It's, and it is a very vibrant tree and it's much larger than you could probably even know. Just all the people you bring together mm. and the infinite possibilities that come off of those connections. I mean, I know, I know that we have, you know, there have been Catalyst marriages, there have been Catalyst babies, there are Catalyst mm -hmm. families, people who met at the festival years mm -hmm. ago, who fell in love, got married, mm -hmm. and um, there have been Catalyst projects, there have been, so they're out there, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You, you remind me, um, and, and that answer of, um, I was uh, greatly gifted to know Walter Landor, who started I guess maybe the first corporate logo, uh, I guess business identity designer, but it, it, world class um, Landorn Associates design firm. Mm. And his gift, as he told me, uh, we were he was kind of a spiritual father for me. He told me his gift was to see what people had inside that he could bring out mm -hmm. and I feel like your creative gift and contribution is as a creative connector mm -hmm. you see you see people's you know what what they have to offer and who you could connect them with that could yeah. the alchemy of spirits I call it and mm -hmm. something new is born yeah. so well, that's a beautiful and incredibly necessary function yeah. in creative communities is someone who connects Here's the person who came up with the idea. Here's the person that could help make it real mm -hmm. and share it with others. Yeah. Well, when we were going through the rebranding exercise last year, trying to redefine how we wanted to present ourselves to the world, the I come from a science background. I was a physics and math major. I love 
nuclear science that anybody who follows me on Facebook knows. Yeah. They see my incessant science Your posts. Mind blowing yeah. uh, headlines. Quantum <laughs> gravity and all these, you know, amazing things. Um, but we wanted to find a brand that connected science with art, with but that also explained what we were doing. And throughout the six months of branding hell, which if you've ever gone through a branding exercise, it is just the worst thing. I'd do it once and don't ever do it again in your life because trying to come up with a corporate name is, is an awful, awful process. Um, we kept coming back to exactly what you were saying, which is connection. And so we were playing around with words like nexus or, you know, uh, things to do with doors or pathways or, and then I just kind of sketched out this image that I've always had in my head when people ask us, what, what is it that we are? I always see us as, you know, Hollywood has this huge iron wall and we're a couple people with little chisels down the bottom that are just tapping a little hole yeah. in the wall and creating a little doorway to get through. Or the way that a friend put it to me was making those connections it's lowering the barrier between those people not knowing each other. You're bringing, and the scientific definition of something that lowers the barriers so that it's easier for a reaction to happen is a catalyst. Nice. And that's how, and, and when huh. that theme kept coming up over and over and over again in different groups that we talked to, yeah. it became very evident after like the fifth time. Okay, we get it. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the name. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting that it is a combination of your love of science and creativity and art, catalyst. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, and I never understood, and maybe you, this would be my question to you guys, why, where along the way did science and art get separated? I've never uh, understood, because when I got out of college as a, with, with my degrees and went out and started writing and working in theater, I would always get the comment, oh my God, how, did you, how do you have a science degree but you're a writer? You know, a lot of the Simpsons writers are math, were former math majors or Absolutely. law degrees. Absolutely. I've, I've always found the same parallel between a writer who sits down to write a script that has a blank page and the scientist who sits down to solve, an, uh, solve a problem, and they have a blank page as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. Both people have a set of starting conditions. You have characters, you have variables, you have rules of the road in writing, you have rules of the road, and, and you're just both trying to find this, the shortest, most elegant solution to the, to the right. story. Right. Yeah. I didn't realize that that, that that was such a unique take on things. Where, where, where do you think that line between science and art is, is uh, drawn? Or what, well, why do we have it? I have said all my life, and, and I have always been attracted to scientific thinkers. I'm, I am a creative. I always have been, but I'm also very logical. Hmm. So I've always said to all my scientist friends, the only difference between us is, you know, for instance, we're both studying light. In a in painting, mm -hmm. it's all about light. And the difference between an artist and a scientist is one just needs to observe it and feel it. The other needs to be able to prove it. Mm -hmm. But we're studying the same thing, yeah. the laws of the universe. Yeah, the, sure. We're observing the universe around us. So it is this basically the same yeah, genesis. They're parallel. There's just different ways of experiencing and exploring the world around us. And I mean, for film and TV, you know, I'm in a very technical part. Yeah. So a lot of editing software, com cameras, and so that really unlocked a part of my brain. Because of the desire to make movies, I had to then learn about lenses and focal length mm -hmm. and f-stops mm -hmm. and, and the mechanics and the science of how light hits the sensor. And So I think it's subjective. The people who divide them, it's only divided for them. I mm -hmm. think once you open yourself up to the fact that learning in one arena strengthens your muscles for another, mm. you know, then you become much more open and mm. less divided. Well, and as the science advances, it, it goes back to the earlier comment about it. The better the science is, the more freedom it gives us to be creative because, you know, look at how much easier it is to point and shoot a camera today than it was 15 years ago. You know, just, right. just yeah. that advancement. Right. So, yeah, it's a fascinating, yeah. it's a fascinating well, web between the two. Well, Absolutely. what did Einstein say? I'm not going to quote him uh, exactly, but he has something about, you know, imagination is more important than knowledge. Oh, I remember that quote, yeah. Yeah, it's I'm a good pretty one. close. It's close, to, yeah. It's close. It the yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> the essence is, is that, is that yeah. and that's Einstein. Yeah. So, yeah. they are parallel, and I think it's the fear of uh, that 
marginalized artists, the fear of what you can't control. And sure. um, fear wants to control and love wants to support. Well, and art's personal. I yes. mean, art's personal, so when you put something out there in any form, like when we do it with Catalyst and, you know, somebody attacks it or you put out a painting and somebody attacks it or you put out a project and somebody attacks it, it, it it's the fear of those attacks that keeps a lot of artists in, mm -hmm. internal. And then, you know, I mean, how many times do you hear the stories of very famous actors tell, you know, it was after they flopped on a comedy, uh, stand-up comedy night that they felt free, or it was when they had their first big bomb that mm -hmm. they finally, yeah. this constant fear of things have to be liked and have to be good, um, you know, hopefully that's, that's diminishing, but I don't know, in today's vicious social media age, I, I worry tough. if it's starting to repress people again in a, in a weird new way that yeah, there's, it's a double-edged sword. So on one end, there's TV shows like Fleabag and others that are coming out that prove that we want this more um, unique voice. Like, we want to know individuals. And so there's a lot of diversity in storytelling and who the main character can be now, which shows that people want something less homogenous. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's bringing some more freedom to the landscape, but then there's also the social media desire to make it fast keep your attention you don't want them to swipe away so yeah. get them in the first second and yeah keep them and so yeah. at the same time it's dampening the creativity yeah yeah it's interesting as we as we learn how to apply this new social media tool to our you know creative worlds and yeah it's fascinating we'll see where we we'll see where it goes next yeah. yeah so just a few more yeah one is what are some just some of the duties of you the executive director it's interesting you ask that. Um, a lot, and a lot that, that a lot that happens um, out of public view. A lot that happens uh, even out of the view of friends and family. Um, and I think, I think for the last seven years, there was a. I had this strong feeling that we hadn't reached our full stride yet. We hadn't really found our full our, our long term home yet. We hadn't kind of built that foundation upon which I knew that we were going to be able to go, you know, straight forward. And we found that here last year. And something weird happened over the last couple months where there's been a lot of, a lot of jockeying behind the scenes for power and the future of the organization and um, who's, who's going to be involved and how they're going to be involved. and people not getting their way, getting angry, and all these things that happen politically when you, start, when you, when you have something that people start to recognize has a great value, sure. which we've always known. More people are starting to recognize it now, which is really validating. Mm -hmm. um, but with that, I feel like now that we have our foundation here in Duluth and in Minnesota that isn't going anywhere, uh, I feel a little more free to finally start telling some of the stories of how this all happened and how this all came to be. Uh, so we're actually in the process of, um, of putting together a podcast nice. that's going to be coming out that kind of goes back through the chapters of how, right. how did we get here and in a way that is extraordinarily detailed and uh, very kind of behind the curtain. Yeah. Um, things that people maybe only saw the end result of and then we're finally going to start going into because I think the fear always, you know, especially being new to the community last year, was if the work and drama that goes on in the executive director role was everyday public, people would just get sick of us right away. I mean, and it would. It would be catalyst fatigue and it would be Philip fatigue. And, and there even was a little bit of that, even when we were just doing all the events and all the stuff we were doing. Um, but I tell you, it's a fascinating job. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's so interesting to day by day wake up and feel like you're in the middle of a jungle and try to figure out which, which tree you need to, to go through, you know, go around next in order to keep the pathway going. And only every now and then do you stop and look back and see the pathway that, that you've made. And uh, it, it can feel very, very lonely. Uh, and then it can be totally exhilarating in everything you want it to be and mm -hmm. everything in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so nice. the as I'm sure people have sensed, uh, 
you know, the daily life of running this thing is far more interesting than, than we probably let on. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's going to change soon. So. Yes. Nice. So yeah. be not, I'm, I'm fascinated to, to, to yeah, yeah. get the insight into the yeah. inner workings. Mm-hmm. Um, fabulous. Yeah. So the next one is, where does... You, you probably have covered this a few different ways, yeah. but um, the passion for storytelling that seems to fuel all of this, yeah. where does that come from? And... I, I think it's who we are. I, I, I have yet in my 38 years met a person on this planet who isn't a storyteller. I, I don't know how I learned anything in life other than somebody telling me it through a story. So I, I don't think that it's, and whether that's a textbook that somebody, some author sat down and wrote, or whether it's, you know, your mom telling you not to put your hand on the hot stove, or, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. You learn, how did you learn how to drive? People told you the story of how to drive and what to right. do and whatnot. I mean, uh, so I don't think it's something that, that we never, it's, it's a weird double negative there. Mm-hmm. I think we're always all storytellers. Yeah. It, it is how we learn. It's, it's how we teach. Even before uh, formal language, people would. Uh, I love watching the um, bush people of. Uh, I had to call them bush people instead of bushmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My brain just did that. Of the Kalahari who teach the children how to hunt different animals by moving like them and mm. and how you. Yeah. you know get close enough to the animal by moving like it and so storytelling before language was how oh, we yeah. teach yeah. it's how we share it's how we express it's the universal language it's yes. it's all we do all day long i mean even yeah. even even in corporate life you know i remember mm-hmm. sitting in the car going to work and all i would think about on the drive to work is you know i have to have this meeting i have to tell this person this thing i have to you know there's there's this hr issue or this all you're doing, even in a corporate environment, is working on the story around you. When mm-hmm. people get promoted, it's because their story and the story that they've created of who they are in the office is perceived to have yeah. more value than somebody else's story. I mean, that's right. Yeah. I, yeah. We, we, we learn as we go that we are in control of our narrative to a very large extent. And yeah. It, and your job becomes telling that narrative. Mm-hmm. And a, a very compelling thing that you did right from the beginning was the narrative of what Catalyst was going to be like in 2019 yeah. here in Duluth. You, you painted a picture, and um, to some it probably sounded grandiose. Yeah. To some it sounded like too good to be true. And honestly, my opinion is that everything you said was going to happen, happened. And it was, it was magical. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't perfect. And, and, and there are still you know, mistakes that we're fixing and drama we're dealing with. And mm-hmm. Well, it's... But, it, but, but yes, yeah. it's, you know, it's a story. I mean... Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's so. To go back to your question, where does it come from? Yeah. I, I don't think, I don't think it's a special inherent trait that that I or anybody else possesses. I think it's, yeah. we all have it. Mm-hmm. Some of us just focus on it more. I guess I don't know. Right, yeah. right. Some of us let it uh, let it be, give it yeah. freedom. Yeah. And I grew up stoic and mm-hmm. not showing any emotion because I didn't feel safe. And then. The dam broke at 25, and I decided, no, these are my stories, and um, I'm going to share them. Yeah. And when I started doing that, I started getting the feedback that they helped other people. Exactly. And then I started hearing, oh, you should write your life stories, and oh, you should make it into a movie. And, and I honestly you know, was busy. I took in my two nephews um, because they didn't have a home and my sickly mother and, you know, I'm a fine artist, so I was pretty busy. So I was like, I don't have time to write my life stories. Besides, I already lived that. I want to live in the present. (laughs) So I actually kind of resented it and I hoped that I couldn't write Mm -hmm. so that I wouldn't have to do it. And I went to a writing workshop and the writer said, "Uh, No, you can write. You have what, you know, all authors want, your own voice. So... Then I realized, okay, I'm going to write him. So two winters ago, I finally had the peace and settledness, and then my son read him and decided to make it into an episodic series, and here we are. And, you know, our stories help other people. They Eh, do, whether we know it or not. That's right, and everyone's story is different, and everyone's story has something in it that 
can you know empower or comfort other people so it's yep. and it's what we have and I think that going back to creativity being squished um, we're taught we're not supposed to talk about ourselves it's the only thing we can be an authority on is ourselves, is ourselves. Right, right. and we're taught that we're supposed to be you know uh, never extolling our own gifts or our own uh -huh. strengths but that's what the best we have to give to the world so go for it yeah. so yeah. I rejected that don't talk about yourself thing very young in life <laughs> and, and then I you know we went to Burning Man and this young man walked up to my son and said your mother saved my life huh? and I had I, I remembered his face, but I couldn't remember any encounter with him. But it's just because I was kind and open in Golden Gate Park when he came out to mm -hmm. the skating scene. And he had a drug problem at the time, and I didn't ostracize him. I told him stories about my drug addiction, addicted sister. And, and mm -hmm. anyhow, I, would, I was just kind and open and told him some stories. And then years later, he tells my son I saved his mm -hmm. life. Yeah. So just being real with other people yeah. Yeah. is yeah. is a gift. Oh and, yeah. And the world needs all of our stories. That's that's why I'm a creativity yes. coach. And it, is, sa and it saves people. It does. Yeah. I, I, you know, there, the the last couple of things I'll I'll say is um, there's there are two very tangible examples of what you're talking about that I see all the time, which is first of all just in you know not as not as catalyst but just as you know, a, a person who lives in the world, you come across people who have addiction problems or all types of different things that they're dealing with. And more often than not, just simply talking with them and having, giving them the chance to share their story right. can be so healing. And it can, be, right. it can be the thing that has been leading to the addiction is they have no other way to tell their story, no other way to get who they are out there. Right. And you get all that repressiveness, just it builds up so much that you end up, you know, whatever whatever the vice is. Yeah. Um, I, I still am waiting for the day when the New York Times headline breaks that some magical group of, you know, uh, uh, psychologists out there have discovered that the cure to addiction is storytelling groups. Like it's, it's, I mean, it's the basis of AA. It's the basis of yeah. mm -hmm. feeling heard. Feelers feeling heard. And That's right. you know, the, the, the criminal prison mentality approach, I understand it, but I think that if we could just insert a level of, well, let's just give everybody some therapy storytelling first. And I know that, you know, Duluth obviously led the way when it came to some of the abuse programs and mm -hmm. starting to talk the about Duluth that, model. things mm -hmm. like that. So that's one very tangible way in which storytelling overlaps into the everyday world that, you know, I'm constantly being asked by economic development and workforce development and government development people, uh, how, is, how is what we do relevant to the community? How is, how is film and TV art yeah. you know, going to have an ROI for the community. And, and so that's one of the connections I think will be made. But the second and the last point I'll make is in Catalyst and in the TV industry, we see and hear that cry for individuality that you're talking about. Uh, at, that is the core of, of the answer to the question every creator asks me, which is, how do I get my show on the air? How do I get my film mm -hmm. distributed? And the answer is make it so individual and so authentic. And when you're sitting in the room of an executive at a network or a studio who's going to potentially write the check that's gonna fund the whole project, one of the things they wanna know is why are you the only person on the planet that could tell this story? And so while the question itself of individuality and art may seem very spiritual and philosophical and kind of high level, uh, and it is, it's also the fundamental answer to how the industry works. And the more artists start to accept that, the better response they usually get about their work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we spend most of our time trying to teach creators how not to mimic things they've already seen. Right. Don't do a sitcom with a laugh track again. Don't do just another courtroom procedural. Don't do, or if you're going to do it, what's your individual take mm -hmm. on it? Mm -hmm. So I think that really is a great way to, to kind of put a bow on this whole, th whole conversation, which is it really has to be that freedom of from fear of expressing who you are and whether or not it ends up having an economic value 
really should be a second, the second most important thing. That's right. That's just secondary. That's great. So before we wrap up, I just want to, what do you want to say about um, how people can get involved with Story Road and how, yeah. when to sign up? And Yeah, the Institute yeah. sign up uh, deadline is February 15th. So make sure you get yourself registered before then. And Story Road is going to be quite an adventure this year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new seminars and things happening. We're starting next week up at St. Scholastica, Great. which with the kind of the general, how does the TV industry work lecture to set the baseline. So yeah, just go to catalystcontent.org and, um, and uh, register yourself and join in the joining the fun. So basically that registration process signs you up for the education stuff, but also it's the track to submit your work. Yeah, you all your work, uh, you get to pick two pieces of work that you want to submit to the festival for free. You get to go to all the seminars for free. You get to watch all the stuff we produce online for free. You get a free ticket to the festival. You, it's just the whole, the whole, the whole thing. Nice. Know, we're trying to make it easy for everybody so that they just sign up at the beginning of the year and they don't worry about it. That's great. For the rest of the year. That's, that's great. That's yeah, nice. Keep it simple. That's Instead of, you nice. know, always doing, having to pay another $30 here or there or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yep. We signed up. We're yeah. very excited yeah. for it. It's yeah. exciting. It's going to yeah. be a uh, hell of a ride. Hell of a ride. So it's the last week of September, right? The actual festival. The actual festival is, uh, yeah, September 30th through October 4th this year. That's nice. Awesome. Yep. Nice. Is there anything else you want to tell? Just thank you. It's what a year it's been. I was just looking yeah. back the other day at what we were doing this day a year ago, and it was walking into houses like yours, just introducing ourselves and That's right. uh, doing it a million times a week. And you know, we're so much further down the road now, just because there's been such great community support and the the natural ethos of Duluth being appreciative of the arts is yeah. is the bedrock. That's the foundation that that we are able to live and grow from. So. You know, we didn't create that. It was here long before us and, and done by others. And, and a, you know, a deep, felt, heartfelt thank you to everybody for keeping Duluth artistic yep. and, and keeping it creative. And, and hopefully that just that grows more in the future. Nice. Great. Right. Well, like I like to say, Duluth deserves this for mm -hmm. their appreciation and participation in the arts. Yeah. They deserve the prosperity and the recognition for the enormous creativity here yeah. and so thank you for choosing Duluth thanks, thanks. for having the smarts to yeah. Yeah. Uh, select Duluth and it's why we selected Duluth you know so um, yeah. yeah yeah thank and you thanks for taking the time today. absolutely thanks for making it happen yeah. thank you Bye. Well, thank you guys bye <laughs> all right that was wonderful yeah. now you're gonna go back and be like oh and the audio was Oh, yeah. uh, no, he's pretty good. <laughs>